All right, guys, what's up? This is Sonic Soul here, and I'm very excited for King of Fighters 15. So much so that I kind of want to help people try to get into the game and try to get them ready for the open beta test that's happening literally tomorrow, this weekend. Uh, so if you guys are interested, I would definitely, you know, recommend checking it out. I'm definitely excited for KOF 15. I kind of just want to play, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a horny fuck. I really just want to play sure. I'm very excited to play this character. I kind of want her so bad. But listen, guys, if... You have your reasons for playing KO15, whether it be you want to play it because you like the game, whatever have you. This is the time you can get the open beta and try it out. Um, and I'm just going to try to use this video to kind of explain everything that's going to be happening during the weekend, as well as telling you the mechanics of the game. So definitely leave a comment down below and let me know what you're interested in with KO15 and what has you excited for the game if you're interested in trying the beta. So let's just get right into it. No more fluff. Let's just get right into the video. So to start off, the beta is going to be happening during the weekend. November 19th to November 21st. November 19th, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern, to November 21st, midnight, or November 22nd, 3 a.m. Eastern. It's available for PS5 and PS4. I will have links in the description down below for which version you have. It'll be down there. You can download it now. I recommend you do that now because if you wait till the beta's open, you're not going to be able to download it. I'm sure what's going to happen is people are going to be mass downloading it and you're going to have to wait mad long for it. I already downloaded it, so I'm ready. The modes that are going to be playable, which I think are very interesting, online casual match. So online casual match. So this is regular matchmaking with randoms. You have room match. So room match, lo lobby matches, ask your friend to come and play a ton of games with you online, which is something that I don't think any beta that I've played in so far allowed you to do. Uh, so you could basically have a 1v1 session with your friend and you could play them throughout the entire beta if you want to. You didn't have to do casual match at all, which I think is more productive than doing casual match. Uh, so you can figure out the most about the game quick, right? Uh, offline versus so offline versus is basically you get to play offline with your friends and whatnot you might run a rambat you might run a, a little three-day tournament training it so training mode which is i'm going to be doing a ton of that i'm going to be in training mode trying to find a lot of things and learning the game myself on my stream uh, i'm sure other people will use training mode for their purposes to find as much as possible so that's very good that it's in the beta and then you have uh tutorial so the tutorial which will teach you the mechanics which hopefully if you watch this video you won't have to do and you can just jump into the game there's gonna be eight playable characters in the game i can't really read kanji too well but i'm gonna try my best and plus i can glean a little bit of the characters from here but basically you're gonna have dolores so dolores you know i'm very interested in trying her out too if you know what i mean you've got shune uh so shune you also have uh chizuru chizuru yashiro so yashiro um, you have Iori, uh, then you also have uh, Sharumi, who I'm very interested in, and then you have Chris, so you have Sharumi and Chris. So that's eight total characters that you'll be trying out. It's not a huge roster, which is good uh, for the open beta test, and it, not a lot of team variety from that, but that's fine, right? You're just trying to get the game out there for everybody to try and kind of experiment with, with the past three days. You don't want to overwhelm with them with the whole roster, right? That's for the final game. Uh, the biggest thing here from this announcement, though, is that they're talking about the online infrastructure and basically the ping for the game. So basically, before you get into a match, when you have to select the team order, it will display the ping uh, or the MS that is the quality of the game with you and your opponent based on the distance. So it's going to be in levels. So if it's a level five connection, it's, it's a legit connection. It's good. It's zero to 19 milliseconds. It's going to basically feel like offline. Level 4 is 20 to 34 MS, so it's pr still pretty good. Level 3 is 35 to 59 MS, which will probably be what a lot of people will be experiencing uh, with the game. That's on average, it's good, it's playable, right? Level 2 and level 1, however, is 60 to 89 MS and 90 MS and above for those levels respectively. And that means that the game is probably going to be laggier. This means you're either fighting somebody that like has a Fisher Price uh, internet connection or they are probably like far away from you so like if you're trying to play somebody in like greenland or some shit it's probably gonna be very laggy so i would recommend that you try to fight people that are pretty good in terms of connection the biggest thing too is that they're also making this uh game with ggpo netcode so ggpo rollback they're not like making their own in-house thing or whatnot they're literally taking the open source code from ggpo and they're like we're just going to put it in our game and ggpo is very very good that's what fightcade uses 
for all of its emulation in terms of playing the old school games like Street Fighter 3. And so I think that GGPO is a very good choice for the game. Hopefully it runs well with the engine and that they've fired up some of the kinks or ironed them out. And that's what the beta is for, to help us see whether or not GGPO will fit well with the game and what tweaks they have to do for it. The rollback frame. So this is something that they're talking about here. So if you remember with Guilty Gear Strive, it shows you the rollback frames, uh, how many frames of rollback or teleportation there's going to be uh, based on the connection. So if the number's high, expect a lot of teleporting, expect a lot of latency, there's gonna be a lot of issues. If the number is low, so like rollback frame one, there's barely any rollback if at all. It's gonna feel seamless, right? Uh, this is going to be displayed in the game and it will change based on the quality of the connection throughout the match and you'll be able to see that. Now I do want to say that there's no like ping display. It doesn't show like the ping counter going up and down in the match. I really hope that they add that in the final game. What I see from this screenshot and it's very small, I'm sorry guys, but basically they show your rank, then they show your title plate, which will both be blank basically. It'll show your character order, the guard bar, the health bar, the super meter. Um, but then it also has this one thing on the bottom, and I hope that's the level indicator for the ping. If it's not, then that's going to make me very sad. I really hope that there's a ping display here. But the rollback frames is good enough to tell us uh, how the connection quality is mid-match. The things that they ironed out from the Tokyo Game Show is that they have the messages to pop up for like reversal and counter. It's not glitched out to where you don't see it. It'll be there when it happens. Uh, but the main thing that they want to aim to improve within the beta that they're looking forward to try to see if they could fix or if it becomes an issue that they could fix is uh, Rando Skip. Uh, from, from this, I can basically infer to you that they want to see whether or not the games will desync if the players skip the intro before the match starts. And I think that's something that they want to work out and it's especially important so that way the game doesn't desync. This happened with Melty Blood type Lumina on its launch where the game would desync if you skipped intros, especially on the PC version. And this is good that they're trying to iron this out with the open beta now, so that way this doesn't happen in the final game. If there are any issues with the game, you can definitely use hashtag KOFXVOBT or KOF15 uh, OBT. So, and tell SNK like, yo, this is a problem in the game, please fix it, etc. So yeah, uh, let's go ahead and talk about some of the mechanics now in the game. I kind of watched this already, but I want to break it down for you guys so you guys can be ready for the game and make it as digestible as possible. I will also link in the description this little like leaflet that was given by a bow, uh, who's a really good Grand Blue Fantasy Versus player. I remember them playing Catalina in that game. They also played Beelzebub. They also played KOF 14 as well. They're a very good player, and I suggest that you look them up. But this leaflet will be in the description, which covers all of the main mechanics in the game so let's just go ahead and talk about the actual mechanics in the game in and of itself this is by kof crazy encyclopedia and i will have a link to this video as well in the description so basically uh the game is going to have the same movement that it had in 14 where you have your hyper hop your super hop your super jump your rolls your regular jumps your back dash and your forward dash so as you can see here a regular jump they're doing a regular hop that's a hyper hop right there that's a super jump they're rolling back and forth and then they're back dashing right so all of those movements are there if you want to know how to super jump it's down and up and you hold up if you want to know how to hyper hop that's down and then you tap up in the direction you want to go and then there's uh regular hopping which is you just tap up instead of holding up and your character will hop with a low jump arc right and then obviously you have your regular jump, you have your regular back dash, you have your rolls, uh, et cetera, and this stuff. So here they're showing that throws are uh, reversal timing. You can wake up with a throw if you've been knocked back or you've been knocked down. So you might be able to basically, be, you just smash throw and wake up. But uh, this will open the mind game, of course, because you're gonna be playing strike throw. And if the opponent tries to wake up with a throw, maybe what will happen is they'll get hit by a meaty button or they'll try to mash throw in between a block string and then you can shimmy them. Because remember, you can do a reversal throw. This means you could do throw out of block stun immediately and that will open you up to getting frame trapped, right? Or worse, you know, shimmied and throw baited. So this is definitely another strike throw uh, game. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Now, this is the auto combo function of the game. This is called Rush. Uh, basically, you tap the A button three times uh, and you will do a series of attacks. You'll do three attacks. Then the fourth attack will vary depending on what button you press. So if you press the A version, 
then you will do your climax super which costs three bars now this will change depending on how many bars you have if you press a and you have two bars you'll do your max super special move which is your two bar super and if you pr if you have it with like one bar left then you don't have three bars and you'll do your regular level one super so that's what the a version the B version, so if you do A, 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 and then B, you will end with a special move. That special move will differ per character, and it is going to be one of their couple special moves that they use within their toolkit. It's not going to be like its own specific special move. If you do A, 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 and then C, you will do your one bar super. So this is your super special move. And then if you do A, 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 and then D, you will do your max super special move. So that's your two bar super. So this is very important overall for knowing this because yeah, auto combos, they're easy. They make execution you know, wah, casuals, but really in the high level echelon, which is what I'm going to explain to you now, uh, using the auto combo and having it function this way means that let's say you were doing a combo and in the middle of the combo, you decide to do your auto combo, right? So you do the, the rush combo. Then instead of having to do the whole ass input for the super, like half circle, back forward, etc., right? You could just press a button instead and it will end your combo with the super making it very very easy to do mid combo this will also make hit confirming from lights easy so you could be like 2a 2a and then do your rush so 2a 2a then 5a a a and then go into super and this is also important because if you don't have meter or if you want to end in a special move that you couldn't normally do from that range because of your light then you will be able to do it using the rush mechanic so not only is this easier but the higher level of players will be able to use auto combo more tactfully so that's just something for you to understand auto combos are for everybody not just for beginners and it will be utilized by all the top players too so there's two kinds of max modes just like uh in the other kof and kof 14 there's your blue max mode which will raw activate and give you that full max mode gauge and then there is your quick max mode where you can activate it after you've pressed a button and it's made contact with the opponent or you've done an ex move right and one thing to note is that if you do the quick mode then it will only have half the bar and your character will go purple instead of blue both of these max mode activations cost two bars to activate so you need two bars of super meter in order to do max mode activation so just keep that in mind when you activate quick max mode the game will freeze everything except your character so there will be a time stop and your character will do a pose and your character will begin to glow purple uh this will be before they run after the opponent this will cause the hit stop to occur allowing you to extend your combo or do a frame trap etc etc uh this is important because this is probably one of the main things about KOF. See, your character runs forward immediately after they've done their attack into it. So, yeah. As they're explaining here, they do 2A, 2A into quick mode activation. And then they throw EX Fireball here. Iori does it and gets the knockdown from the other EX, right? And they spent the rest of their EX mode game. So they spent one, one EX mode on the EX Fireball. And they spent another one on the EX overhead and then went into a the combo ender so that's something to note is that from your light you can deal a good portion of damage using quick max mode now one thing to note here you see yori not yori uh, kyo is doing 2a 2a then they do quick max mode and then they get the run forward and then they do 2a 2a again it becomes a little difficult to frame trap right because if you're trying to frame trap from your lights and then your character's running forward in between that and there's a time stop it becomes a little more reactable now i wonder if this is going to change based on what button you press and how your advantage will adjust based on this little time stop that happens from the max mode quick activation but all this basically means is that uh yes yeah, it's, it's a little difficult to, to frame trap as you know unlike previous games now of course you can use your max mode meter and spend it on ex moves or supers so you can get your super special move by spending the rest of your max mode meter right you can also do your max super special move so your two bar super or your climax super with a certain amount of quick mode gauge and one bar of special meter so you see terry has one bar he spends a little bit of the quick mode bar plus one bar to go into his two bar super so this is definitely going to be high resource management here. As you can see, Kyo is going into his climax super. He was in max mode, 
So he spends one bar plus the rest of the raw maximal to go in the climax, which is the three bar super. And like I said before, you know, these supers are gonna cost a lot of resources. You have to manage your resources carefully. So as a result, because we know this, you're gonna be able to do big boy damaging combos using these resources. This is all, by the way, from like an overhead. So if you got hit by an overhead, this is quick mode activation to confirm it. Then they spend the, ma the quick max mode meter just to do the super, right? And then they spent one bar plus the rest of their max mode gauge to do their climax super. And here, if you have max mode and you get this combo going, you can get TODs. Like, it's insane. You can get TODs. If you have three bars plus max mode and you're on one character left, the character's dead. Like, you can kill characters. So here they're showing you, depending on how many characters you have remaining, will show how much more length of time you have for quick max mode. So if you have one character left, then you're going to have a lot of quick mode gauge. If you have two characters, then it's going to be a little bit more than the usual, and if nobody died, then you're going to have half uh, of max mode gauge to work with. And the same goes for meter, right? If you have three characters, then you will have three bars. If you have two characters, then you will have four bars, and if you're down to your last character, then you will have five bars. Now, you can spend a bit of your EX gauge to use EX special moves. You couldn't do this before in KOF, I believe. You can only do EX moves with uh, max mode, but now you can spend a bit of your EX gauge uh, or your super meter to do EX special moves. As a result, you can splice in your EX moves with uh, supers and everything and also use max mode as well. This basically nets you a lot of damage on combos So as you can see here, I'll just rewind it back for you But basically if you've got like three bars you can spend that on doing EX moves and then do max mode to activate Right you can do max mode to activate or you can do supers like you get a lot of damage You can just spend meter and unload it with EX moves. You don't need max mode you can combine the two with quick max mode and do very good combos from just like overhead or lights, which is very important. You need to know how to manage your meter. It's gonna be super important. Now, raw max mode activation is much longer than max mode quick. Clearly, you have a full bar to work with. And when you activate raw max mode, you do more damage than you would regularly. You do about 1.25% more damage and you do more damage to their guard bar as well. You can even do uh, EX special moves, you can guard cancel, and you can use Shatter Strike, which is the new mechanic uh, with your max mode meter. You don't need to have meter to do these moves. You can also use your max mode meter. Now, Shatter Strike. Shatter Strike is the new mechanic here in this game. You can think of it like Focus Attack in Street Fighter 4, but you can't charge it up. Basically, you perform it by doing 236C plus D, and what happens is your character will have one guard point on them so they have a bit of armor they have one hit of armor for this special attack and so you see how athena her range isn't very good on her shatter strike but leona has a really good range on her shatter strike so if they get hit by the shatter strike you can follow up because they get hit into a crumple again just like street fighter 4 with the focus attack and if they get hit in the air you get a wall bounce so again this is a very like good attack it only costs one bar to do by the way and if it hits, you will gain back half of the meter that you spent using it. So like V-Shift and Street Fighter 5. So now, on the first frame, you see that? On the first frame, Terry tried to use Shatter Strike, but he got hit. Meaning that it's not frame 1 armor, so he gets hit out of it. And of course, if they block the follow-up here from the Shatter Strike, or if it whiffs, you can get a punish on them. So it's not something you could just willingly throw out. You can also throw them out of their Shatter Strike too, so they can't just like do it on your wake up. Now, the one guard point that you have, it's just one guard point though, but it's it will arm it through everything. The only way around this is if you use like an invincible move, so like a super, a DP, whatever have you that's invincible. You can also do a Shatter Strike by canceling normals and command moves into it, so you can go into it from your uh, normals or specials. And again, if you do it twice, then they get knocked back. So you can't crumple them like over and over. But you shouldn't be using your Shatter Strike 
or your focus attack in the middle of combos because it, it really scales the damage. Like the damage would be much higher had Kyo not used Shatter Strike here. You should definitely be doing this move in the neutral whenever you see somebody throw out like a fireball or a forward advancing attack like a burn knuckle etc etc you can also use shatter strike in a combo too so it's kind of reasonable to use it in one combo just realize that again it does prorate but it's definitely like it's valuable so like other kof games you don't need meter to go into super from your specials you literally just go from special to supers it costs one bar to do your super special move so you can just go into a Rekka, for instance and then go into your super special move which costs only one bar right so you could use your special move and then go into your super special move now the last thing that they note here in this video is that the distance between the characters and the corner is much shorter in 15 can't have a hit and run playstyle. you can't like run and backdash and zone all day like in uh previous games this game wants you to be aggressive so it's not this mean that there's not gonna be zoning at all in the game but you can't just like be like i'm gonna backdash all day and i'm gonna run away from you you have to kind of manage your space accordingly because if you backdash yourself into the corner it's gonna be insane and plus you're in a counter hit state if you backdash you're airborne but you're juggleable so you got to be careful. If you hit an airborne person and it's a counter hit, you can convert that into huge damage. So this applies to back dashes as well. So you really have to be careful. And yeah, that's pretty much all the mechanics of the game. That's everything you need to know to get into KOF, especially with the beta coming very, very soon. Again, I will link this video in the description down below. But yeah, man, uh, the last thing as well I have here is a command list of moves that you can check out for the characters available. Like I said, we're going to have Shun-e, Kyo, Iori, uh, Chizuru, Doroez, Yashiro, Shirmi, and Chris. So we're going to have eight characters to play around with, and I will definitely be using this to help myself out in the game. Uh, but yeah, that's everything you need to know. I'll link all the resources in the description down below. Hopefully this video was very informative and got you guys ready for Friday. I will see you guys on my stream on twitch.tv slash sonic underscore soul. And again, please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Now then, it's time to go look at my waifu one more time. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Peace.